Hey folks, David Monar here. Welcome back to the free video series on Aperture. In this video, I wanna talk about the limitations of kit lenses and how that relates to Aperture as well. So different lenses will come with different cameras, but a lot of times a camera like this uh, Nikon D3400 or even this Canon uh, Rebel T6, they both come with a very similar uh, lens and that is an 18 to 55 zoom lens so I can zoom in to 55 and I can zoom out to 18 All right, same thing with this lens that they're actually the exact same stat just different brands Okay, and uh, these lenses are variable in that they can zoom in but they're also variable in something else They're variable in the maximum aperture size So what do I mean by that? Well, let me rewind for half a second. Okay, Aperture is the size of the hole that's inside of your lens, okay? Remember, a larger size hole will let more light come in, right? A larger hole, if you remember from the depth of field lesson, also creates a more blurry background or a more shallow depth of field. A smaller hole will very obviously let less light come in than a larger hole. A larger hole lets more light, a smaller hole lets in less light. Well also a smaller hole will create a more deep or a deeper depth of field, allowing the background to be more crisp and more sharply in focus, okay? So large hole, shallow depth of field, more blurry background. Smaller hole, mountains are in focus, okay? More crisp background, okay? So that's a quick recap, and so that, that's something you need to understand when we're talking about this, all right? These lenses have a variable aperture, okay? A variable maximum aperture size. So when I say maximum, I mean what is the largest size hole that this lens can go to, okay? The largest size hole that this lens or this lens, remember the, the exact same lens is just a Nikon and a Canon version, and there's several other cam uh, camera brands uh, that have very similar lenses. Um, the maximum size, you can actually see that um, right on the front of this lens, uh, I believe. Yeah, it's right there. It says 3.5 to 5.6. So what that means is that 3.5 is actually the maximum, the largest size hole that this lens can go to to allow the most light in, okay? This lens, this old Nikon lens, goes to, to 1.8. 3.5 is like this. So what that means is that this lens just physically cannot let as much light come in because it, the maximum, the largest size hole is this, whereas 3.5, whereas uh, you know something like a fixed 50 millimeter lens can go to a larger size hole to 1.8. So there's limitations just from the start. The fact that it's kind of starting you off at a kind of a middle of the road maximum aperture size, not allowing you to let a lot of light in. So you're a bit limited just to start off when you're shooting indoors, when you're shooting sports, when you're shooting in low light situations, stuff like that, you're already limited, all right? But here's where it gets kind of even more lame, if you will. So first of all, I don't mean to knock these lenses. These lenses are great. They're in an inexpensive way for Canon and Nikon and other camera brands to make great quality lenses that they can give to you pretty inexpensively on, um, you know, as part of a kit when you, you know, buy a Canon Rebel or a Nikon D3000 series, okay? So they're good lenses when there's good light out, okay? When it gets to low light, they're not as awesome. And here's specifically why. First of all, you're starting off at 3.5. That's like, oh, it's probably more like this, like your maximum aperture hole, not letting as much light come in. And here's the thing, as you zoom in, the variable says 3.5 to 5.6. As you zoom in to 55, that maximum aperture actually gets smaller. So it's like giving you essentially like a handicap. You can't open up that aperture size to as large of a size when you're zoomed in. So if you're shooting that sports event, that basketball game in the gym, okay, of your daughter or your grandson or whatever it is, right? And you're zoomed out wide and your, your photo looks okay, but all of a sudden you zoom in and the photo just got darker, but you didn't change any settings. That's because your camera is forcing you to have a smaller aperture hole when you're zoomed in to 55 millimeters. Okay, same thing with this thing. So really, these lenses, they're good for when there's lots of light or if you're shooting landscapes or if you're shooting outdoors, that's totally fine. But if you're shooting in low light situations, you need to have a lens that can allow you to either have a fixed aperture 
where it's not variable, where it's not gonna force you to change to a smaller size hole, or you have a you know, fixed aperture, or a, um, or a zoom lens like this, which is honestly a lot more expensive, uh, but it does have a fixed aperture, okay? This lens is a 24 to 70, it's a Canon lens, and the fixed aperture is at 2.8. So it's already letting you go to a larger size, but as you zoom all the way in to 70, it doesn't force you to make your aperture a smaller size. You can let the same amount of light in when you're zoomed into 70 as you can when you're zoomed all the way out to 24. That is not the case with the kit lenses, unfortunately. But it's a way for Canon or Nikon or whatever camera brand to give you a decent quality lens you're just a little bit handicapped when it comes to shooting in lower light situations. So what can you do? Do you have to spend $2,000 on a zoom lens like this that can stay at a fixed aperture of 2.8? No, absolutely not. I mean, if you can afford it, that lens is great. Nikon has a wonderful 24 to 70 as well. But what you can do is you can buy the, what I call is the Nifty 50, okay? This is actually an old version of the Nifty 50. I don't have another one right next to me. Um, but it's a 50 millimeter 1.8. There's more current modern versions with autofocus and all that stuff. This one is very old, very manual, where you twist the dials manually, right? But it allows you to go all the way out to 1.8. Now you can't zoom in or zoom out. It's a fixed focal length, which means it doesn't zoom in or zoom out, okay? It's gonna stay. The only thing you can change is the size of the hole and the focus, where you focus. You can't go wide or, or go zoomed in. But the fact that this lens goes up to or down to 1.8, meaning making a hole as large as 1.8, it will let a lot more light come in, okay? So you can shoot those sporting events, you can shoot indoors at night, you can shoot gorgeous photos from like in a low light situation. And remember, the larger size hole actually creates that shallow depth of field. So if you wanna shoot, let's say in low light, and you want to have a very blurry background because you're shooting, let's say, a senior portrait, and you want your model's eyes to be perfectly in focus but the background to be super blurry, you can change your aperture to be 1.8, which is a large size hole, which will allow you to shoot in low light, and it will also allow you to have a super blurry background. So the Nifty 50 is a wonderful lens. I think it's around 150 bucks. Um, for a Canon and Nikon version, some, some of them are maybe around 200, depending on the, you know, the price at the moment. But it's a very inexpensive lens compared to something that's like a $2,000 lens like this, and it can actually produce a pretty, pretty great quality of light. Now there are more expensive versions of a, you know, a 50 millimeter lens. Um, the current versions of the 1.8 are you know, around 150 to $200. This is a Canon 50 millimeter 1.2. It's very heavy, it's very beautiful, it's very good quality, it's an L series lens, and it goes down to 1.2. So as this lens goes basically down to 1.8, this lens will open up even larger to 1.2. So that will do two things. It will allow more light to come in through the lens and it will create that extra shallow depth of field or rather that extra um, blurry background and create beautiful bokeh because this lens is absolutely beautiful. But you don't have to spend that much money on it. You can do the 150 or $200 version and still get fantastic shots and upgrade your lenses and your equipment as you get time. Don't go into debt for this stuff, right? Do it when it makes sense. All right, so now that you know about the limitations of kit lenses and some other lenses, the next thing I wanna talk about is how aperture um, changes as you change your focal length, as you zoom in or zoom out on your lenses. I'll see you in the next lesson.